harvester kids. Yeah. Okay, now all the bells. It's off. Got this kid. Let's get this started. Let's do it. Uh, this uh, is the so-and-so show. Uh, normally my co-host John would be here, uh, but today I, I guess he decided to... What is going on? Brandon, would you like some coffee? Whoa! Whoa, how is that coffee mug floating? It's crazy, right? <laughs> uh, it's definitely crazy. Whoa, Brandon. I know that you're freaked out because you can't see me, but don't be. Just keep doing the show, like I'm here, standing beside you. Okay. Anyway, because I am. Is there a point to all this? Isn't there always a point to what I do? Almost never. The point is, Brandon, you rely on me way too much to do this show. And I want you to feel like you have the confidence to do this show when I'm not around. That's why I'm wearing this green screen, to make myself invisible. Uh, okay. I think that only works when you're on a green oh, no, screen. Oh no, Brandon! Whoa! Still... Whoa! The coffee mug's floating around. Better get one more sip of Java. Wow! One anymore? Anyway, today we're talking about confidence. Look at the cube floating. This magnificent geometrical shape is solving itself. Whoa! Whoa. It's already solved. Anyway, Whoa. We're talking about confidence, and uh, yeah. we're trying to learn. <laughs> I'm super chicken! Look at me, I'm super chicken! We're trying to learn how to see ourselves the way God sees us. See yourself, see me! Oh, how did my head just show up? How did my head just show up? Oh, no, it's blocking you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's floating Say, I thought I was trying to learn how to do the show by myself. Say no more. Okay. Give me a second. Wish it worked. Yeah, hold on. All right. Whip my zippers down my shirt. <laughs> oh, boy. Shh. Here we go. Uh, okay, go. Thank you. Uh, today on the show, we're talking about No, nope. I'm oh, sorry. I'm ah. oh, sorry. I can't do it, man. I thought I could just stand here silently doing nothing, but you know what? I can't do that to you, pal. I yeah. just can't. Let's play a game. Okay, but what kind of game could we possibly play when I can't even see you? Oh, oh, oh right. A simple one, mayhaps? <laughs> For instance... How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers am I holding up? Ready? Three. You're holding up three fingers. How about now? One. How about now? Four. Six. Zero. Okay! This is too easy. Let's play a different game. Let's play Marco Polo! Marco Polo! You know how to play Marco Polo. You yeah. will say Marco. I will say polo, then you'll have to locate me just by the sound of my voice. Ooh, 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 ready? Marco. Polo. You're right there. What? By the chair. I don't understand why this is. Okay, you know what? 
Let's play one more game. We don't need to keep doing this. I can see you. What? I'm invisible. If I if I if I'm not invisible, what's the point of me coming out here wearing the spandex suit? I don't know, silly sight gag. I don't do silly sight gags. I'm serious, man. Dodgeball. Are you sure about this? <laughs> no. Are you sure about this, John? You can't hit me. I'm invisible. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Could have been a lot worse. How's that? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that, uh, that. Uh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Tell him, I'm invisible. Sorry, he might be concussed. What are we talking about today, Kellen? Ugh. Today's story is about three guys who went through something terrifying. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon liked to go big. Build me a statue. Of course, your majesty. Granite, marble. <laughs> Copper? I'm thinking gold. Gold? Pure gold. Wow. Okay. Six feet tall. Seven. Taller. Twenty. Taller. Seventy-seven. Taller. Ninety. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. We'll need a supersized furnace to smelt that much gold. Then supersize it. Commence the smelting. So the king's craftsmen melted down tons of gold and shaped it into an enormous statue nine feet wide and taller than two and a half telephone poles. They set it just outside the city in the broad plain of Dura. Mmm, such a finely smelted specimen. We must invite everyone to admire my statue. So the king instructed messengers to summon all of his officials. Three of them were Jewish men who had come to Babylon as captives, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a royal decree. That I can see. Are you all coming with me? So the three friends arrived at the plain of Dura where all the other officials had gathered. A messenger from the king called out loudly. This is the king's command. When you hear the sound of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes, you must fall down and worship this golden statue. Worship a false god? That's worse than odd. I wouldn't even give it a nod. Oh, and FYI, if you don't do it, you'll be thrown into a blazing furnace. <laughs> Immediately, music began to play. Every single official threw themselves down on the ground except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And let me tell you, their refusal to bow did not go unnoticed. Who do they think they are? I think we should make things hot for them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Several officials dusted themselves off and went straight to the king. King Nebuchadnezzar, may you live forever. Thanks. Will do. You told everyone to bow down. As soon as they hear the sounds of the horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes. But these Jews you appointed don't serve your gods. They refuse to worship your gold statue. Even when they hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes? Even when they hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes. Oh, now I am very angry in a very big way. The king sent for the three friends. Is what I hear about you true? Don't you serve my gods and worship the gold statue I set up? We will not bow. Even when you hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes? We refuse to kowtow. Even though you'll be thrown into a blazing furnace? This ends now. Even if we're thrown into a blazing furnace, the one true God will save us. But even if he didn't, we still wouldn't serve your gods or bow down to some golden statue. Uh, that didn't rhyme. Nebuchadnezzar's face burned red as a ripe tomato. <sighs> Make the fire seven times hotter. Tie them up, throw them in. The king's strongest soldiers grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knotted heavy ropes around the three friends and then shoved them into the roaring flames. 
the king peered into the blue hot heart of the flames and then leapt back in surprise. Didn't we throw three men into the fire? And they all deserved it. Look, I see four men walking around untied. The fire hasn't harmed them. The fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Sure enough, a fourth figure stood there with the three friends. An angel? Or perhaps Jesus himself? Dumbfounded, the king rushed to the door of the furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you who serve the Most High God, come out! The three friends walked out of the scorching flames, completely unharmed. The royal officials crowded around to see. Their hair isn't singed. Their robes haven't burned. They don't even smell like smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed that, as usual, he went big. May the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be praised. He has sent his angel and saved his servants who trusted in him. No other God can save people this way. So I'm giving an order about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No one may say anything against him. Well, what happens if somebody does? Well, they'll be snipped in tiny pieces and their homes turned into piles of trash. The king even honored Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and gave them higher positions in the kingdom. What'd you think, fellas? That was great. Yeah, I loved how they said that they knew God would save them, but even if he didn't, they'd still stand for what's right. Yeah, talk about confidence. Mm -hmm. I know, but don't miss this. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the whole time. And God is with us too, so we don't have to face the hard stuff alone. That's amazing. Hey, thanks, Kellen. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You see, John, when you're not around, I'm still not alone. God is always with me. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, in that case... Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I ever want to give my lips and my hair color in this ever. Okay. It's all you! Oh, boy. Reveal the question. When are some times you need to trust God? When you feel all alone? Or when you have to face something scary, uh, like moving to a new city or trying out for a sports team. Talk about it amongst yourself. When are some times you need to trust God? <laughs> and we'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. Or will you be able to see me? Yes. Marco! Porno! John? Yeah. Oh, hey, there you are. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find you because you're wearing the green screen suit. Okay. You, you okay? Yeah, tag. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, you're it. Okay. Marco! Oh, hello. Oh, you're right there. <laughs>
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a ton of confidence, didn't they? They stood for what was right even when they knew what was at stake. And they stood together. All three were thrown into the fiery furnace and miraculously they weren't alone. God was in there with them the whole time. That's how it is with us too. God is always with us. In fact, after Jesus died and came back to life, one of the last things he said to his disciples was this. You can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. So that means when you have to do something scary, God is with you. When you feel like you're too tired to move, God is with you. When you need strength, God is with you. And when you're with a band of friends who know you and care about you, God is also there with you. God loves you so much and he won't let you face this life alone. So here's the one thing to remember today. Trust that God is always with you. Remind yourself when you're feeling less than confident that you are never alone. I'll see you next time.